Hello everyone and welcome to the Biblical Bookworm. My name is Elizabeth and today I will talk about how to do the total consecration of Mary and how to put into practice when you are consecrated to Mary, how to live that consecration. But first I would like to address the topic of being a slave of Mary. As you might know, to consecrate yourself to Mary with that consecration means to become a slave. And first I would like to say that that does not mean that we give up our free will or something like that. It means that we consecrate everything that we have and what we are to Mary. So we consecrate our body, soul, our possessions, and also our merits, sacrifices, and prayers. And what that means is that we can't decide anymore for who we pray, but we can only make like suggestions to Mary. But uh, that does not mean that we can't accept any prayer petitions from other people. We can't pray uh, for those people. It just might happen that Mary decides to use those prayers, for example, a rosary for some other person that has no one who prays for her. And also I would like to say that becoming a slave of Mary is not a choice between freedom and slavery. But as uh, Matthew, who um, commented under my last video, pointed out, in Romans 6, 16 through 18, it says that we are either slaves of um, sin or righteousness. So either way, we are slaves. Even when someone chooses to stay a sinner, there are still slaves of that sin, which is obvious with addictions, for example. So thank you, Matthew, for reminding me of that. And now we'll talk about this, the so-called exterior and interior practices of that devotion. So what you do when you actually decided to make that consecration, how you do the preparation, and also what you do after you are actually consecrated. Now, how do you do the whole preparation? The preparation takes 33 days, and I will link a list in the description where you can see on what dates you can start the preparation so that it ends on a certain Marian feast day. The main Marian feast day here would be the Annunciation on March 25th, which is suggested by St. Louis de Montfort to be the main feast of that devotion. And in order to uh, make the preparation during 33 days, you would have to start on February 20th. During that prepara preparation, you read certain passages from the New Testament, certain pages from True Devotion to Mary, which I have summarized last week, and you read a chapter a day or so from the, the Imitation of Christ. All those books are available for free, so just type that in, or I will link them in the description maybe. And you have to meditate on those passages, on those pages, for around 10 to 30 minutes every day. And there are also some prayers that go along with that. After 33 days, you can do the consecration either in front of a priest or you can do it privately. Um, when you do it in front of a priest, you just read the text of the consecration and um, then you're consecrated, basically. And St. Louis also advises us to maybe make some sort of sacrifice or pay a little tribute to Mary on that day. For example, you could fast that day or light a candle or bring some other type of sacrifice, some other mortification. I also know someone who decorated a candle and lit that candle afterwards. So just be creative here. St. Louis suggests to renew that consecration at least annually. So one would go through the whole preparation again and then renew the consecration. You don't have to do it in front of a priest. And you can also renew the consecration every month or week or even every day, just in your thoughts that you say to Mary that you are fully hers. And I would like, I would also like to say that in um, German-speaking countries, there is a specific book for that preparation. It's called Das Goldene Buch. Same thing is for uh, French, Le Livre d'Or. In English, you have a specific book that is called, I think, Preparation to Total Consecration to Mary. And um, now let's continue with the exterior practices. Saint Louis advises us, those are only suggestions, to maybe remind ourselves of that consecration, of the fact that we are now slaves of Mary, by wearing some sort of iron chain. I know some people that actually wear a, an iron chain um, on their wrist. Um, Amber Rose, for example, wears a kind of a ring that reminds her of that. I myself chose to just wear my um, miraculous medal combined with a cross because I realized that now I am consecrated to Jesus through Mary so I use both the cross and the miraculous medal on one necklace and 
Apart from that, there are certain prayers that are linked to that consecration. For example, St. Louis says that a slave of Mary should have a specific devotion maybe to the angelical salutation and also the Magnificat, so to meditate on that would be also very beneficial. The point of the Magnificat is that it can teach us how we should behave in situations where we receive a compliment, at least in thoughts, how we should handle that, how to not become proud when you did something right, when you actually achieved something. And I would like to um, read the beginning of that prayer, which goes like, My soul proclaims the greatness of the Lord. My spirit rejoices in God my Savior, for he has looked with favor on his lowly servant. From this day, all generations will call me blessed. The Almighty has done great things for me, and holy is his name. So what we see here is that Mary doesn't say, okay, I don't have a special child that's just an ordinary child I'll receive here. She actually acknowledges the fact that the child, the grace she received is special, but she gives credit to God for that. She doesn't take any credit for herself, and we should imitate that as well. And the last prayer that St. Louis links to that, uh, to that devotion is the little corona of the Blessed Virgin which is, I think, pretty unknown. I didn't know about that before I did the consecration. And it takes, like, I think, seven to eight minutes to pray. So I would highly suggest memorizing that if you can, because otherwise you would have to carry the book or the prayer every day with you to recite that prayer. Apart from the exterior devotion I just explained, there is also a, an interior devotion that St. Louis talks about. And he says that he knows many people that did the exterior part, but he knows few people that um, also did the devotion interiorly and persevered in that devotion. He says that the interior devotion can be summarized in four words. We do everything through Mary, for Mary, in Mary, and with Mary. So it would not be enough to just offer up our day with the morning offering to Mary, but um, we should first do everything with Mary, which would mean that we renounce ourselves and our own desires. We acknowledge the fact that we are nothing in front of God, and we place ourselves like instruments in the hands of Mary. Then we have to do everything in Mary, which, according to St. Louis, means that Mary becomes sort of an oratory of our soul. So we pray in Mary. As I said in the video last week, with that devotion, we imitate Jesus, who was for nine months in Mary's womb. So we can imagine that every day we are carried by Mary, and when we die one day and go to heaven, that would be our birth. And also there is a certain devotion that we can do during Holy Communion that also is part of the doing everything in Mary, which would be that first we ask Mary to lend us her heart that we can receive uh, Jesus worthily. We ask uh, Jesus to not look at our sins, but uh, at the merits of our mother Mary. We can also imagine how when we after we have received holy communion how we introduce jesus into the heart of mary or we can imagine how jesus and mary converse with each other so every holy communion is we, we don't receive that personally we have to imagine that in a way but um we imagine that we just united jesus to his mother then we have to do everything through Mary, which means that we only talk to God through Mary. We only talk by her intercession and we do everything through Mary. For example, Padre Pio, I'm not sure if he was consecrated to Mary in that way, but he is known to have prayed at least 15 rosaries a day, which equals 75 decades, which equals four hours of rosary a day, approximately. So that shows us what that can mean, what it can mean to do everything through Mary, because praying four hours of rosary a day, apart from being a priest and a well-known confessor, means that every moment when Padre Pio could pray the rosary, he did that. And lastly, we have to do everything for Mary, which means that we do everything for her interests and her glory, which of course is nothing else than the interests and the glory of God. Everything that I just said you can find in the book The Secret of Mary by St. Louis, where you can read that and maybe meditate on that and 
think about how you can um, apply that in your life. I hope you liked the video and uh, see you next week. God bless and bye!